Hi folks, welcome to the Canna Machine podcast. I'm your host, Gary Canaday. A show about the CBD and canna industry, where I talk to brands, retailers, activists and educators. My guests cover topics like UK law and compliance, product launches and campaigns, which are usually looking to bring about change in legislation. So if you're a CBDer, canna curious or blazing your own trail, Hopefully there's going to be something useful for you here. In this episode, we discuss all things hemp. I talk to Patrick Gillett from the cooperative Hempen, who are based in the Oxfordshire countryside. He discusses hemp farming and the complexities of home office licences. I meet Rebecca Sharman, chair of the British Hemp Association. She shares her views on hemp and why we should think about protecting the plant. And in the final section, I meet with Lorenzo Romanese, director of the European Industrial Hemp Association, who lobby on behalf of farmers across Europe. Hemp farmers don't have a particularly easy ride in the UK, and hemp are no exception. Facing recent issues with the Home Office hemp licence, Patrick took time out to explain the history of the cooperative and shared some of the challenges UK hemp farmers currently face. Thanks for joining me today, Patrick. My pleasure. Can you tell me a little bit about what Hempen does? Hempen's a not-for-profit farm-to-fork grower and producer cooperative. We produce food products out of, out of seed and we produce cosmetics. In July 2019, we received the unexpected and, and shocking news that we wouldn't have our license renewed to grow hemp, which we'd applied for to grow for seed and stalk, as is allowed under the current framework. Prior to that in previous years we'd informed the home office that we'd been harvesting flowers for CBD production as an essential oil. We'd never heard any problem or warning about that so we'd always taken that as uh, implicit consent for three years telling them the same thing every year in big capital letters and and not hearing anything back. However after our last harvest 2018 the government changed the guidance and made it very clear that we could not do that and so in December when we applied to renew we didn't apply for anything to do with flowers. It's a process that should take two to four weeks, maybe two months at best, and it actually took eight months, by which time we were midway through the growing season. And unfortunately, to avoid a a prosecution for the cultivation of cannabis, we had to destroy a a, a whole very healthy 40-acre crop. That crop was worth about £200,000 in seed and stalk products to us. But if we had been allowed to harvest it for uh, flowers and and sell it as our CBD products, it would have been worth approximately £2.4 million. At uh, Hempen, you, you've worked as a cooperative. Could you explain to us what goes on there on a day-to-day basis? So we're a not-for-profit cooperative and we're actually also a community built around that cooperative business. So many of us live on the farm together and, and many more live around the, the farm on the, on the same estate. So it's a real community and we like to think of it as a, a holistic business. We're not just uh, turning out a product for some profit. In fact, all the, all the surplus revenue we create goes back into the business and back into building a community, really. Now, we also differ a little bit in that we're non-hierarchical, so we, we make all our major decisions by a consensus of the whole co-op, and we're all paid an equal wage for our time. So we try to organise in that way. <laughs> We have launched a campaign called Save UK CBD because it's apparent that the current framework won't allow uh, UK growers uh, to produce CBD from any any hemp grown in the UK. One of the things we're going to be asking as part of our legal challenge to this, this situation and as part of the campaign is why are different hemp farmers treated so differently in the UK? At the moment there seems to be a messy and ir- irregular licensing program and the only people who have actually got a license that will allow them to do what we were doing is, is GW Pharmaceutical, who are obviously a, a major 
a corporation and no one else seems to be able to produce UK grown CBD. Now is that a deliberate policy from the government and from the Home Office uh, or is it just a result of the regulatory framework that's not caught up with the new market um, and is not really ready to realise the incredible economic and ecological opportunity of that of that market. So what you're saying is there is one company in the UK that has got this license to produce bud and flower. They're allowed to do it, but you're not. Yes, GW Pharma, a license to produce medicinal cannabis, different category of law altogether. It seems that they would be the only growers in the country that could even produce a zero THC UK grown product uh, under their specific license. The CBD industry is set to be worth one billion pounds in the UK by 2025. All of that money will go to hemp grown abroad, except, I suppose, the medicinal CBD and, and THC products produced by GW Pharma. Here's a crop, industrial hemp, that can do so many different things, and the key to unlocking it is uh, allowing them to realise the value of the flowers. Instead, they're having to ch chop those flowers uh, head off and leave them to rot in the field, leave millions of pounds to rot in their fields, whilst they eke out a living from uh, the, the seed and stalk. I read a couple of weeks ago that in Jersey, some hemp farmers were granted an extension of this license to be able to harvest bud and flower. Yeah, it's actually a very hopeful story in Jersey. Um, Jersey's got a slightly separate legal system to the UK and so they've got a bit of autonomy on that. And so they've simply tweaked their law, amended their law slightly to go back to what it was in the UK pre-2000 so that farmers can harvest the whole plant and all parts of that plant rather than having to throw away some of it. If you want to sell CBD in the UK, most people are turning to Europe because they're able to harvest the bud and flower. Absolutely. And what we want to do with our campaign, saveukcbd.org. What's the public interest in this policy? Uh, because we can't see any, you haven't offered any argument. If there is something we're missing, and there's a very good reason for it, please do share it because that will help us all relax about this situation. I think the government sees hemp as just a problem to be regulated in the drugs and firearms unit of the Home Office, rather than amazing ecological and economic opportunity, which they could demonstrate their support for by regulating it in, in the Department for the Environment, Farming and Rural Affairs, DEFRA. If, if it was in that department, it'd be treated more like an opportunity to, to be realized. There is actually absolutely no reason for uh, the, the FSA to stop uh, CBD sales in the UK. Um, we know it's absolutely safe. Just to wrap up, if people want to find out more about your business, where can they go? Yeah, so you can go to hempen.co.uk and find out more about us. And coming soon, saveukcbd.org will be the farmers and industry-wide campaign to save UK CBD. Simple as that. In this next segment, I meet Rebecca Sharman, author, educator, chair of the British Hemp Association and Sharman. In the interview, Rebecca shares some of her views on protecting hemp, the challenges UK hemp farmers face, as well as some of the key aims of the British Hemp Association. I set up the British Hemp Association, founded it in 2017. Two hemp farmers, um, Hemp and, and Vitality Hemp. We came together and we decided that actually we needed to set up the British Hemp Association in order really to protect the plant, to create a voice for the industry, to educate, lobby and connect. Here in the UK, at the moment, if you want to grow hemp, you have to go through the Home Office. You need to get a Home Office license. This is because hemp is considered a controlled substance because it contains THC you are not allowed to process the leaf or the flower. This then gives us only options to utilize the stalk or the seed, which unfortunately doesn't hold a lot of the profit. The most of the profit is in the flower and the leaf. So the aim of the BHA really, first and foremost, is to remove the Home Office, um, move hemp from the Home Office and put it back into DEFRA, which is our department for the environment, um, food and farming 
this would allow it to be seen as an agricultural industrial crop so we can start utilizing it for purposes other than um, what it's been seen as which is a controlled substance the hemp has 25,000 uses um, many of which are um, uses that you don't consume so actually to have it as a controlled substance when you're making plastics or paper or building from it it makes no sense Uh, the second aim that we really want to do is to harvest the leaf and the flower. Right now, CBD is sold all over England. It's legal. You can walk into any shop, any health food shop and buy it. But our farmers can't grow it. So it is stipulated on the Home Office license that if you want to grow hemp, you have to destroy the flower and the leaf, which makes it a totally unfair marketplace, considering that UK is one of the biggest consumers of CBD. So what we really want to be doing is um, enabling the farmers, our farmers, UK farmers, to be able to utilize the whole plant from a flower down to the root without um, any difficulties, be able to um, have our own CBD market in the UK, a domestic CBD market, rather than allowing imports to come in from countries that are allowing the, the processing of the leaf and the, uh, of the flower. And the third is the THC levels. Ideally, we'd like to up the THC levels to make a healthier plant and to give us more options to utilize the plant. At 1% still, the THC is too low to have any impact, psychoactive impact. In fact, turmeric has more of an impact on uh, 1% than THC. And we see in the States since the Hemp Farm Bill of 2018, a massive, huge sweep uh, of in innovation and uh, technology and R&D going into hemp. And England's missing out on, on the potential of this amazing crop. If you're taking whole plant extract, it has to have THC in it. It's not just one molecule of that plant, it's the whole, it's what the plant offers in its entirety. And that's why it's the entourage effect with cannabis or with hemp. And so what we're seeing is that traditionally you took one aspect of it like THC or um, DMT or whatever that molecule is and isolating it and removing it. But hemp, hemp is a, it's an entirety plant for health and well-being. So it's not just CBD, it's not just TSC, it's CBN, CBG, all the terrapines. So what we really want to do is whole plant medicine to enable people to ingest the whole plant. So taking and extracting just the TSC out, you're losing a lot of the goodness that the supplement can give you. We've got a situation in the UK of more liberal approach or attitude to, to CBD at least. Do you feel that this now means that the doors are opening in a positive direction or have you got concerns about the way things may go? Oh yeah, definitely. That's why we set up the British Hemp Association. The reality of it is, is that once the, once the genie really is out of the bottle in regards to the potential of hemp, in, rega in regards to the commodities that it can create, in regards to the medicine that it provides, then uh, my fear is that the cottage industry that's been keeping it alive for all these years will just be ripped out away. And actually, that's why the British Hemp Association set up was to ignite and bring together, connect, and then ignite a voice for hemp and for the industry to remove all these political shackles, to stop the hypocrisy, and to give the industry a chance to thrive on its own merits. I mean, loads of people want to get involved in hemp. There's a real big interest in hemp. The consumers want it. The problem the problem is, is that the government's not giving us an opportunity to get out there and make it happen. You've got your crystal ball in front of you, right? you're gazing into it. Three years or five years down the line, what do you see? What's changed? What have we got? Hemp is now in, in DEFRA. It's an agricultural crop, it's considered an agricultural crop, it has all the subsidies and support as an agricultural crop. Uh, you see loads of farmers using it as a break crop. It's taking over rapeseed oil and now everyone's growing for hemp. There's a number of ways it could go, but a lot of farms doing uh, small plastics uh, or graphene, a lot of different products here, and also farmers growing for CBD. Um, and us being able to utilize the whole hemp plant 
from flower down to the roots and really creating jobs, creating revenue, creating R&D and technology and really seeing a thriving hemp industry here in the UK. Finally, if people want to get in touch, where's the best place to go? Uh, so you can email me, at, come and look at our website, britishhempassociation.co.uk and uh, yeah, viva la hemp. <laughs>as an agricultural waste, so we cannot treat it. So that's why we are advocating to unlock the flower. We simply, what we want to Ineia, give us the wall plant, because the wall plant, we can do so much benefit from the environment, for the company, for the consumers. But it's so stupid for the moment that we cannot touch the flower. So we are working on that. But we need to deal always with the United Nations Convention, so we need to change all the updated law. Imagine that if you are a farmer, and you, be, and you plant hemp for fibers, you can earn up to 1,000 euro. If you are a farmer and you can use the flower, your value for one hectare can go up to 4,000. We need the flower because I want that the flowers can be an extra income for my farmers. Within AIA, we have an advisory board that help us to understand the plant, to understand the process, the chemical process and all the stuff. We produce, I believe, valuable document that we share with the Commission. So they are keen to work with us because they need information. They don't have information. That's why they are regulated so badly. And we've got this law then across Europe about hemp farmers not being able to use bud and flower. What's the reason this is in place? Why is it blocked in all the European countries? Before Europe, we have United Nations. So we need to dig into United Nations Single Convention of 1961. And in this text, we schedule the flower in Schedule 1 as a drug. All the problems came from the United Nations Single Convention that we need to change. Probably I'm too positive, but I deeply believe that we will succeed. We want that people feel better thanks to hemp extract. We want that the, pla the planet where we live feels better too. So plants hemp, it helps the soil. We just want a plan to be back in our culture and in our agriculture because it can make an impact on the environment. We are not the solution, we are part of the solution. Finally, if people want to get in touch with your organization, where should they go? www.aia.org. Okay, and AIA is E I H A. Right, correct. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Thank you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the show. Maybe you got some useful ideas or heard something that inspired you in some way. You can access the show notes for this episode on the Canna Machine website. If you're enjoying this podcast, then please subscribe or leave a review. To get in touch, you can reach me at info at cannamachine.co.uk. That's info at C-A-N-N-A machine.co.uk. And until next time, stay lucky. Yeah.